So this silence is really golden. I appreciate this silence because I have all, I have muted you all, right? <laughs> However, so this is a time for uh, an afternoon nap for most of us. So this silence shouldn't sing a lullaby and make you all <laughs> to close your eyes and uh, start sleeping. So I have to bring an alertness now. And I am going to start the session. Uh, Dr. Thomas Rudolph, you can start recording. Thank you. So we have come to understand that India too occupies among the Asian countries in the whole world a special place and a special pride of being an oriental nation where there had been many traditions across many cultures, the Tamil Sangam literature being one of the most ancient. So when you compare the Tamil Sangam literature and what we study in the name of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, and about their picturization, visualization of the landscapes, the portrayal of life as it is, and the life processes, the physical, physiological, mental, emotional, and the treatment of most of the conditions with herbs, massage, music, and of course, when it is chronic and very tough with needles, with needles and other materials, to apply pressure on the surface of the skin. So this was an early wisdom when the human being evolved from the monkey to the ape man and from the ape man to the Neanderthal, cro and then further into the most primitive human being occupying several geographical zones of the world and then trying to migrate and then trying to find new land, trying to find new places like Australia, like United States, the Indies, in the times of Columbus, Magellan and several explorers who just found lots of new places and settled down in colonies and thereafter started new civilizations in many parts of the world. And yet, there is a Greek medicine, there is Chinese medicine, there is Indian Siddha Ayurveda, and there was the development of Greek medicine into Yunani when it came into Persia and Arab, Arab countries. And there was a discovery of homeopathy by a general medical practitioner, an allopath who was fed up with the medical uh, inefficacy. Most of the medicines couldn't cure something, some foot corn, a corn in the foot. Thereafter, he started exploring on himself, experimenting, sacrificing his own life to find new ways and a similia, similibus curenter. And there were so many medicines, so many treatment systems have come in. And yet the traditional Oriental values are common for Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, as well as Chinese medicine, folk medicine, everything. So they have a common axis. They all follow a particular system which talks about the emotions, the frequencies, the patterns, and the external climates which influence the internal make up internal climate of a person. So let's get along our journey. And this is a compilation. I have named it a glimpse of TCM on the go because I had been talking about TCM. I had been talking about acupuncture and the development of acupuncture science. As I had been traveling around many parts of United States in the year 2013, January to March, 
So whenever I used to listen to music and then sit in some parks and beaches, it was my hobby to deliver short lectures on my mobile phone. And these videos have been compiled for the sake of a study module. And I have actually inserted such video clips inside this PowerPoint slide. However, however, you may not, you may or may not like the quality of it, but just listen to the message of it and appropriate text on the slides you can also read along. Now, let me proceed. Welcome all of you. Tao, the way, the way of nature, the way of free will and purposeful living. Now listen to this audio. Happy birthday to all of us. All of us, right? Everybody slept the previous night and they woke up this day. They are alive, right? So this is the way of Tao. This is the way of nature. This is how one can even offer a tomato. Why should he offer an apple or a cake? Sweet only. He can even offer some bitter curd. So sweet alone is not a taste. You go by the nature's own way. And you understand that everyone is born again every other day. Death is sinking into slumbers deep. And birth again is waking out of sleep. So, if you understand this and such things and follow nature and be still and silent and just be an onlooker, just watch things as they happen silently, quietly, and move with the wind, move with the green signal, move with the way that leads you there into life, the tunnels of life. That's Tao. That's Tao, I say. Now you understand Taoism, it's moving with a free will and a purposeful living and not stumbling anywhere, not fixing rules, not fixing or discriminating male and female, living, non-living, the higher, the lower, the whites and the blacks. So everything is connected to every other thing around us. So macrocosm talks about all the hills, all the spaces around, all the rivers, all the volcanoes, all the forests, the jungle, the rocks, rubble, everything. And microcosm is the internal manifestation of all that is outside. So whatever is outside is also inside. When it is raining outside, there is a depression inside. There is a rain inside also. There is a happiness inside also. When it is very hot outside, our, our heart, our organ heart will also be burning with fire and we will be sweating on account of that. So there is a microcosm inside, which is every time reflecting what is outside and what is inside. The emotions actually bind to each and every, each and every impetus, each and every stimulus from the external environment. And that creates an internal environment, an internal manifestation. So Andam, Pindam. Andam is macrocosm. Pindam is microcosm. Anda, Pinda. Okay, right. Then holism. This holism is a whole. On a whole, you have to include all the responses of the microcosm to the macrocosm. And the effects of impacting, the effects they create on one's own body, mind, and spirit all together, the body, mind, spirit axis including the socio-economic status. So according to latest WHO's definition, health is not just a set of values in your blood or a set of values in your fluid, in your body. It is a perfect health. It is a harmonious health of the body, mind and spirit and very good socio-economic status, which gives happiness to a person. The changes of four seasons and the variations of day and night impact the functioning of the human body greatly, while various geographical environments do influence the variations in body constitution also. Each living and non-living entity, whether it is living or non-living, is not the matter. It is, however, connected to our life. 
like the gadgets, like the uh, monitor in front of me, like the webcam in front of me, like the microphone that receives my voice, everything is actually living. There is no non-living entity at all. Everything is actually vibrant with life. Everything has a life. So they are all bound to time and space that operate on them naturally and mutually. That is actually the a short gist, a short essence of holism. The changes of four seasons and the variations of day and night impact the functioning of the human body, while various geographical environments do influence variations in body constitution. Each living or non-living entity is bound to time and space that operate on them naturally and mutually. 40% of healthcare in China, which is 75% of worldwide practice, is based on TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. It is based on the body's balance and harmony, and its components are acupuncture, diet, herbal and nutritional therapy, physical exercise, and remedial massage, also known as Tui Na massage. The human body is an organic whole with close relationships existing between the Zhang and the Fu organs, which uh, eventually in the next slides I will be explaining to you and the physiology and pathology of the body caused by the external climates and the internal emotions. An inseparable connection exists between the organs and the skin, the muscles, the blood vessels, tendons and bones, as well as the nose, mouth, tongue, eyes, ears, external genitalia and anus. So the microcosm within macrocosm, connecting everything with everything Every other thing inside and outside, small, big, is holism. Now, an introduction to this acupuncture. Acupuncture is a drugless healing system that works beyond human discoveries. It was a pre-scientific tradition documented 2,000 years back in China before anything significant was understood about the normal functioning of the human body or disease pathology because before William Harvey, because Louis Pasteur, before medical science actually discovered lots of things, this traditional science was written. It was just written in records and then documented by the Chinese in the name of Neijing, the inner canon of medicine by Huang Di, an yellow emperor. Huang is yellow, Di is emperor. Huang Di, yellow emperor, had written Neijing the inner flow of a spark of life, which is Qi. Now, let's... I want to initiate you into the knowledge of acupuncture science, which had been very much traditionally evolved over thousands and thousands of years, probably three millennia ago. To understand acupuncture, you have to understand the evolution of human life. The evolution of the human being from the four-legged animal, the monkey, the chimpanzee. Then he started thinking differently. Then man started walking erect, holding his head up towards the space, his thought process started triggering him to be intelligent, more intelligent than the other animals. That was the story of evolution and let me come to the primary principle that is known as Qi in acupuncture. This Qi is the spark of life in all activities, in all growth and development, in the of the single cell into a multitude, a multiple state within the embryo and then for formation of the organs and then the development of everything, the body, the mind, the psyche, everything is ruled by Qi which was created by the Yang 
the heaven and the in the earth. When there was a flow of love between the heaven descending downwards to meet the earth and the ascending principles of earth started meeting, the celestial and the terrestrial could meet. There was the union of two principles which resulted in the third one. Similar to this, in embryology, we have the amniotic sac protecting the yolk and a flat disc forming between. And from this flat disc, there was division as ectoderm, then the endoderm, and then the mesoderm, the three. Always there is a trinity in truth. You may have learnt acupuncture elsewhere, the yin and yang, but there are three principles, the yin, yang, and when they combine, they create the chi. So this chi is the core concept in acupuncture system, the spark of life. You may call it the survival intelligence. You may also call this the embryological intelligence and more. The celestial young from heaven descended to meet the terrestrial in of the earth to create the human being, to mediate between themselves. In embryological development, the ectoderm was activated by yang while the endoderm slowly closed in under the lips as the mesoderm created all the organs, bones, blood, fascia, muscles, and chi. So the union of yang and yin led to creation of chi. Yang and yin mutually follow one another like day and night. The absence of light leading to darkness. They create one another and they depend mutually on the other. They move into the other in opposition and interchange and they never stay 50-50 as they are blended and intertwined for progression of life. The yang of the heaven and the yin of the earth had created chi, the spark of life, the life force itself. Now, for a clear understanding of the yin and yang, I am donning a fabric there are dark shades, or I should say darker shades, and lighter shades where there is less darkness. So the yang is more brighter and the yin is more darker. You should understand that these are comparative values or comparative principles. The heaven is brighter than the earth. The sun is the absolute yang. Water is absolutely in. Because it is down, you cannot pump water upward. It always tends to go downward. So the yang and the in keep on interchanging like day and night. A little bit of brightness even in the night because of the moonlight and a little bit of darkness even in the daytime because of the clouds. So a cloudy day and a moonlit night is what you see on this fabric. And like the day and night keeping changing, changing, altering every day, every 24 hours. The yang and yin keep on depending on each other, interchanging, merging into each other, encroaching into one another. And that's the whole story of the physiology even within the organs. You can't just say that one particular organ or one particular group of tissues or muscles is just young or just in. There's an interchange. There's a relativity everywhere. 
So when you apply the relativity theory here also into acupuncture, you can understand the yin yang theory, which is not just a row of straight lines, but a spiraling like the spiral that you see in a movie taking you way back to the past. So everything is spiraled. The spirals are the whole mystery of the whole creation. I should say the holistic creation. So yang and yin are relative attributes and not absolute entities. Yang is unseen, abstract, and can only be felt like love, power, happiness, and heaven, which you cannot see and you cannot quantify. You know only the quality of it, you, can, you cannot quantify. In encompasses all that we created, all that was created by us and by nature and can be seen, heard, smelt, and tangible. So you can see a flower, you can see the color, you can smell a rose, so you can hear a sound, so you can see somebody. But Yang is always unseen and abstract, and it is just power that we feel, it can be felt only. So everything in life is cyclic and based on spirals and epigenetic manifestation, that is the lifestyles and the surroundings actually influence a person who is born on the earth. And due to these epigenetic manifestation, life changes and the life quality is derived. And you can see an embryo here. So how the yin and yang is depicted here and the clouds, a cloudy day and a moonlit night. So the Zhang Fu theory represents the intricate web of integrating all the aspects of the human beings inner and outer climates and patterns. So there are five Zhang, six Fu, and six extraordinary Fu organs. The Zhang organs are solid, storing blood, spirited, because there is a spirit each in one Zhang organ. Ever alert, so there is an alertness in each and every organ because of the spirit, because of the live spirit inside it with emotions and generative, mostly in. And the Zhang organs are mostly in. It's not that they are absolutely all Zhang organs are in and absolutely all four, four organs are yang. So the Zhang organ is mostly in, while the four organs are hollow, transporting food, fluids, and waste intermittently and transacting all the time. So mostly they are young. Let me now talk to you about Zhang Fu theory. Zhang or the continuous solid organs in the body which need a rich blood supply and which generate certain properties which are needed to be carried by chi all along the body. The full organs are all hollow and they are like transaction halls. They are transacting organs where the food, the waste material, the urine are filtered from blood and then the bile that is secreted in the liver. So you should understand that the small intestine, large intestine, stomach, and the three cavities body. And the gallbladder and the urinary canal are all four organs where there is a transaction, where there is a result of our physiology. Actual origin of the physiology happens organs, which have to constantly work. They can't be intermittent like the stomach or the intestine. The 
hollow organs or the foo organs have intermittently they have to stop, they have to start, they have to start again, they have to stop. And they have a feedback system. They are in a loop. The Zhang and the Fu are interconnected through certain points, which we'll be teaching later as duo connecting points. And the quality and quantity of the generation of qi uh, is actually controlled by a feedback of the four organs. You will learn all those theories shortly. But however, the whole basis of ACM acupuncture is that there are five Zang organs and six Fu organs and there are also extraordinary Fu organs in the whole system. The extraordinary Fu organs are those which resemble, they resemble the Fu organs so they are hollow but like a bone, right? And like the gallbladder. Gallbladder is also an extraordinary Fu organ. As well as a Fu organ. So these extraordinary Fu organs are marrow, brain, this, which actually have to store something for some time, for a while. Say the uterus is actually protect the baby until delivery. The baby is delivered safely to the mother. And the gallbladder has to store and synthesize the blood acid and then deliver at the time of digestion. Therefore, these five Zang organs, six Fu organs, and the six extraordinary Fu organs are the primary base within acupuncture, anatomy, and physiology. Thank you. So besides the regular Zang Fu organs, there are six extraordinary Fu organs. They function like the Zang by storing the essence, the kidney essence, marrow or blood, and preserve them, but have the hollow structure and the transaction function, like the intestine or uh, uh, the stomach. So they are all directly or indirectly functionally related to the kidneys and the eight extraordinary vessels, which created us from the small zygote to the newborn baby and awaken the Yuan Chi, the source of purpose of life, so the Yuan Chi intelligence all along our lives can be tapped by treating the extraordinary vessels. So the extraordinary Fu cannot store and keep things for itself like the Zhang organs. So they have to discharge. They have to deliver. The uterus has to deliver the baby. The gallbladder has to discharge the bile. The brain has to deliver messages. It has to... Uh, bring things out of the data bank for you to answer, for one to answer an interview. So he cannot just keep all the memories. He cannot keep everything inside. So he has to write, write a story. He has to write whatever he has seen. So that should be a communication. So the marrow has to produce blood and the blood has to move in the vessels. It cannot get stagnated in the vessels. So the vessels actually are also extraordinary foo organs. So now come to the description of the five Zhang organs, the heart, liver, lungs, spleen, and kidneys. So as far as the Zhang organs are concerned, there are two main functional characteristics. Number one, the physiology related to the spirit and the emotions. The harmony between their functions is a key link for the internal stability. Number two, the balancing of the external and internal climates of themselves, their coupled Fu organ, balancing between the tissues and their respective sensory orifices. Now, look at the connections of each and every Zhang organ. The heart stores the mind, relates to joy, 
controls tongue and taste the liver stores mood relates to anger controls eyes and sight lungs store the soul they relate to sadness and worry that is grief and controls nose and smell spleen stores emotions relates to thinking and anxiety pensiveness and controls mouth and taste kidneys store will and relate to fear controls ears and hearing so each zang organ stores something relates to an emotion and controls a sensory organ which we had seen now now let us see how they are influenced heart is influenced by heat liver is influenced by wind lungs are influenced by dryness and cold there cannot be cold in the lungs and dryness cold and dryness they cannot go together spleen is influenced by dampness kidneys are influenced by cold and dryness if kidneys become dry the body fluids will not be eliminated the kidneys can shouldn't become dry that's very very serious when babies have persistent diarrhea that's an emergency so we shouldn't allow the kidneys to become dry then at that on those occasions the uh, oral rehydration salts were found they, they were discovered by general medicine the okay ors oral rehydration salt electrol and electrolytes were found and nowadays we can see that most of the people hospitalized for any serious conditions are just treated for dehydration and they are discharged after uh, supplementation of the ions in their body other than that there is no uh, medical procedure going on in most of the hospitals heart governs blood liver stores blood so how they are related to chi and blood is the next passage heart governs blood and liver stores blood lungs govern the chi and disperse and descend the body fluids spleen governs food chi holds blood in vessels and influence the body fluids kidneys store essence and influence body fluids here you can connect three organs which are responsible for the body fluids the lungs the spleen and the kidneys and now you can connect two organs which are very much important for blood or three organs heart liver and spleen and you can also understand that the lungs are essential for purification of blood by exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide by letting out the carbon dioxide and adding more oxygen to the hemoglobin now we come to the vessels muscles and other components of the body which are controlled by these zang organs so the heart controls blood vessels and shows its health on the facial complexion face is the index of the mind and mind resides in the heart liver controls the muscles the tendons and shows its health on the nails lungs control the skin and show their health on the body hair the fur spleen controls the flesh and shows its health on the lips kidneys control the bones and show their health on the scalp hair as well as the teeth now the extraordinary four organs are brain marrow bones vessels gall bladder and uterus uterus is the most extraordinary four organ it's called the room of jing in males and houses sperm it is closely associated with the kidneys so when you look at the extraordinary four organs they will be very closely associated with the kidneys or they will be very much important for storing the essence brain is the sea of marrow that's the name that's the name in tcm for brain so brain is the sea of marrow and its functions depend on heart and kidney tamilan kalimandan solitaam adalle thalaila kidney illen solvaanga 
சில தமிழர்கள் சாதாரண வழக்கில் சொல்லுவாங்க ஸோ இட் இஸ் மச் காமன் இன் சம் சம் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அவர் நேஷன் பிகாஸ் திஸ் ஹஸ் பீன் அ ட்ரெடிஷன் பிகாஸ் பீப்புள் ஹேட் பீன் கேரிங் திஸ் நாலேஜ் அண்ட் தென் பாசிங் இட் அரவுண்ட் டு சே தட் த கிட்னிஸ் ஆர் ஆப்சன் த கிட்னிஸ் ஆர் ஃபெயிலிங் டு கண்ட்ரோல் த பிரெயின் ஸோ த பர்சன் இஸ் டுபீட் so common matrix of bone and brain is marrow which is produced by kidney essence the bones are related to kidney and they store the bone marrow the gallbladder stores bile which is nothing but refined essence vessels are extraordinary the blood vessels as they contain blood and once again you trace this back to the kidneys which produce the bone marrow that makes the blood so something manufactured by the kidneys the blood so blood is actually contained in the vessels so the these are all having a very close relationship to the kidneys and then to the very vital essences of the body and of course these extraordinary four organs can directly communicate with the extraordinary vessels so that's why they share a common name now the five zang organs store the essential chi but do not discharge it they are full but cannot be filled up like a stomach or an intestine the six fu organs transform digest and eliminate the matter but do not store it they cannot keep food the stomach cannot keep food the intestines cannot keep the stools so the bladder also cannot just retain the urine it will burst so the gall bladder also shouldn't actually get swollen it shouldn't bulge so it, it will burst and cause problems so they are filled yet not full so they are filled with something and they are discharged they are not full any time but the zang organs are full but cannot be filled up so they cannot discharge it means they cannot discharge so the extraordinary organs are similar to the six fu organs they are hollow but differ in what they do they do not receive drink and food directly the extraordinary organs store essential chi like the zang organ without discharging it so they they are similar to the zang and they are also similar in being hollow and discharging like the fu organ so they mimic both the qualities of zang and fu so that's why we call them extraordinary fu organs now let's talk about jing lu the jing and the lu the heaven moves down earth moves upwards to create physiologies in man the waves of heaven and the particles of earth created us heaven is subtle and invisible and corresponds to images and ideas earth is substance and form and corresponds to physicality so when you just visualize you can just see that there are waves from heaven there are many waves descending from heaven like this so there are there are all cellular networks there are you can understand that there are so much 2g 3g 5g everything actually i am scribbling now on this wall so these are all uh, inputs from the heaven they look like rain the strings of rain and sometimes they resemble uh, lightning a lightning actually coming from the heaven so everything come coming down abruptly from the heaven and now you can see similar to all these there will be particles from the earth so earth is actually one that is more of a form so all the forms all the shapes all the geometrical shapes whatever you see will come from the earth so it always has a thickness so it is more thicker and uh, uh, whatever uh, comes upward is darker and there are uh, many things slowly crawling crawling from the earth uh, as you see uh, so they crawl upward and then 
slowly try to meet the waves so there are waves and particles so this is a this is one of my most favorite theories and i am going to work on it the wave and particle theory so the waves of the heaven and the particles of earth created us heaven is subtle and invisible and corresponds to images and ideas earth is substance and form and corresponds to physicality i think you can understand the the movement of the sperm is quick quick and wavy and the egg will sit in a place it is it is attached in one particular place and it doesn't move at all until the sperm penetrates and uh, uh, the life also arrives when the life arrives and gets into the zygote and then the fetus starts growing until it gets delivered kicking the arms and legs and then uh, putting uh, and then putting the head upside down into the cervix and then coming out to the to the world so there had been three lives actually three three types of living one the life inside the father's sperm and again we had been living in the mother's egg and finally as a soul entering the zygote so we had been uh, having three lives and after that when the soul entered or the spirit entered then we started moving the body given to us by the father and mother who are actually the biological mother and the biological father and we came out we don't know still what our purpose had been what could be our purpose and all that okay so that shamanism let me not go further taoistic so the heaven gives thoughts while the earth gives form this is a vertical axis of heaven and earth in humans represented by the heart and kidney the heart the kidney and then the nourishment from the kidney is through the spinal cord to the brain the kidney is created the brain according to tcm so the kidney fills the marrow in the bones and the brain the heart stores the mind that is the spirit and therefore processes the thoughts through the brain the zang organs receive terrestrial inputs of dampness heat and wind through the in meridians that crawl upward from the feet to the fingertips of the upper extremities the four organs receive celestial inputs to harmonize these three properties heat is heat is actually neutralized by cold dampness is neutralized by dryness wind is neutralized by humidity or silence or stillness so wind and activity are actually encountered by rain rain precipitation humidity and silence so you know that when there is wind around there won't be rains and when there are rains along with wind the rain will stop soon right so the wind and the still the silent gloomy uh, climate outside we would all have seen and, and the humidity you may understand that it is a sensation that is a state of state of the weather that is a weather state before the rains before the rains which which we feel as descending through the triple warmer and the gall bladder that's why you have to silently lie down at 9 o'clock at the time you should not have anything anything any thought process then you will go deep into the absolute sleep process and there will be a good detoxification because the gall bladder meridian is the one that needs you to be silent to allow the spaces to allow the spaces to get drained the lymphatic drainage to lubricate the tendons and people who come to you with pains the tendon pains and the issues of muscles and fascia are already having sleeping disorder and they are not sleeping between 11 and 1 that should be the problem to be the major problem in all the humans so there is a time to sleep and people are not Uh, utilizing that, and hereafter we have to see in our clinics and in our treatments that you do the needling or you do the treatment on their gallbladder meridian. That is the Shoyang, which is one that drains all the toxicity from the body. The four organs receive celestial inputs to harmonize these three properties. 
through the yang meridians that drop downward in the reverse through the head right now look at uh, a picture that i had been uh, always using for explaining uh, the 12 meridians actually there are six meridians the tai in the shou in ju in tai in neutralized by yang ming shou in heat neutralized by tai yang gold ju in activity neutralized by shou yang silence tai in dampness neutralized by yang ming brightness and dryness so you have 3 into 2 6 3 pairs of meridians and now you can see that the progression is from dawn to noon to dusk to midnight so soon between 3 and 5 is lung meridian then 5 to 7 is large intestine 7 to 9 is stomach 9 to 11 is spleen and then you move on and then you move on to heart which is 11 to 1 small intestine 1 to 3 and 3 to 5 is ub that is bladder then 5 to 7 kidney which is dusk sunset and then after that you have 7 to 9 pericardium 9 to 11 triple armor or stanzia then 11 to 1 midnight is a gallbladder and then liver 1 to 3 so midnight and just pre dawn and once again dawn so this is a cycle so the jing the vertical jing meridians are also following an organ clock so which we are not going to talk about today we are not going to talk about organ clock today but so this is how the yin yang as well as the meridian system the six meridian system are very much integrated with the organ clock so the organ clock is one that integrates every other theoretical basis theoretical foundation in acupuncture and here you can see how we can compare the whole uh, process of the whole of uh, one second How you can compare uh, this trinity, this the three pairs of these meridians, the the lungs, spleen, the stomach, large intestine, and see how they are connected. One module projecting into the other. See the spleen actually communicating with the heart, and then the kidney communicating with the pericardium, and then the pericardium once again reconnecting to the lung. How all these three, how the trinity is merged superimposed one into the other. So dampness, heat, and wind go together. They move up together. And dampness tends to crawl slowly. Heat will instantaneously reach the heart. And wind will try to push the damp sludge slowly upward. Initially, the sludge will be at the pelvic region, then it will slowly come to the stomach, then it will slowly come to the chest, then from the chest it will come to the trachea, to the breathing apparatus and it will block the nose, it will block the head, it will block the orifices of the head. So there is a slow movement of damp substances, whereas heat will quickly move and the wind, the velocity added to, it will add velocity to both the substances, it will add velocity to uh, both the damp substance and the heat in the blood. So therefore, these all these three together are physical properties added on to the blood. They actually decide the condition of the blood. They decide the circulation. They decide everything, the chi and the uh, blood properties. So in Ayurveda, they call that kapha, when there is dampness and stickiness. And pitta, when heat and cold are not proper, when heat is in imbalance. They call it pitta, fire. And vata, that is wind, the neurotransmitters not uh, properly processed and uh, the proteins not folded properly, causing 
wrong neurotransmission and seizures or weakness of the head so that is all coming under vata tremors falling down a sensation of falling down and all okay now come to find that each and every meridian each and every jing in tcm when you take them purely when you take dain as spleen and lungs purely you can see that they have two primary functions that are dampness and nutrition the spleen works on the arterial capillaries carrying fresh blood oxygen and nutrition and they meet the venous capillaries carrying used and damaged blood carbon dioxide and waste so it is very much integrated with the blood that carries the nutrition and the blood that is needed to nourish the cells and each and every organ and each and every part of the body so the lung works on this level through the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide within the body they work together to ensure that nutrition gets reaches every cell while carrying away waste products out of the body so you can define that the tie in feeds every cell and pushes blood to micro capillaries so to each and every nook and corner through serotonin by generating serotonin the tie in or the spleen is responsible for production of serotonin and pushing the blood into the micro capillaries come to show in the kidneys and the heart they drain the heat to clear the heart so the, when the heat is drained they clear the heart while dredging and opening the in collateral vessels the channel invigorates and moves blood around so there is blood circulation the blood is moved around the whole body and heat is moved away from the body by urination by the kidneys the heat is removed so both the heart and the kidneys are sources of metabolic fire heat or warmth in the body the heart is a source of fire through moving and circulating blood throughout the body the kidneys supply this through mingmen fire which is on the back that is due for unlike tie in the shoin organs or the shoin channels do not work together but rather have a relationship of dynamic tension so that is what we treat as hypertension the dynamic tension created by the kidneys and the heart not in harmony so this ensures happiness within and outside the see the work of shoin the ultimate goal of shoin is to ensure happiness within the person and even outside the person his his behavior or his reactions to the society also will be good if he doesn't have a tension or if he doesn't have a hypertension if he doesn't have heart or sweating or anxiety so let's go to juin which is very very important much more important than these two so the liver and pericardium come under juin juin fosters in nourishes the blood and regulates the distribution of blood to other channels it calms spirit quieten the spirit the 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 person within the ego the moods and everything because it is associated to the liver right because of the relationship of blood to the spirit it also regulates wind the neurotransmission the suddenness of which causes disturbances in the circulation of blood abruptness so the liver stores blood for the whole body while pericardium stores blood for the heart the brain the juin is used for dredging the channels to move and restore normal blood circulation and thereby address both spirit issues and wind that is cognitive and behavioral health the cognitive health and the behavioral health of a person is actually assured by a proper juin and its ultimate focus is to decide performance and position in life so it decides whether a person is competitive in his uh, interviews successful intelligent in music or intelligent and coming up to the stage in life and all that so the performance and position in life if the juin is proper the liver and pericardium are properly treated will actually be assured 
So the Tai Yang now come to the Yang meridians, the small intestine and bladder. These meridians run on the most expansive superficial dorsal, that is cold and dark, our darker side, our shady side, the back of one person. So on the back, the Vedala, so the devils tend to grab us, they tend to pull us back by pulling our uh, uh, skin off the back, a portion of the body where heat is discharged off the body. So these meridians run on the most expansive superficial dorsal portion of the body where heat is discharged off the body and therefore the blood is also cooled, therefore forming the first line of defense in an external pathogenic attack. Now remember why we use small intestine 3, hoxi, to clear itses or rashes or any a neck pain or heat in the blood or even for uh, producing breast milk, why it is being treated. To control sweat or uh, night sweats, why SI3 is used. So that is the reason we use SI3 and for even treating varicose veins, we treat UB40, SI3, which can cool down the blood, which can actually make the blood flow along the back, along the dorsal region properly. So the point pairs are often used to address pain or stiffness or numbness issues running along the course of the back of the body from the cervical spine to the lumbar region and all along the autonomic nervous system. So they align, these Tayang points align with the autonomic nervous system, the postganglionic and the preganglionic neurons. Now, you can say that their focus is they are vulnerable to cold and stagnations and anything that catches from behind and they can be treated by using this tayang. Now we come to Shoya. Most of the schools haven't understood Shoya appropriately. Suresh was raising his hand. Should I unmute you, Suresh? Suresh, send a chat message if you don't want. Okay, right. Shoyang, the Sanjiyavu and gallbladder. The Shoyang is the pivot between the opening of the Taiyang and the closing of the Yang Ming. The Taiyang is posterior, Yang Ming is anterior, and this is in between. This is used to drain the heat while dispersing clump chi. That is the lymphatic drainage system. We use this to dispel heat and chi stagnation that are toxic. As Shoyang is paired with Juin, its most important function is to regulate chi, blood, and heat in the Juin, most notably the liver. And this is like an immunological system. This is like a lymphatic drainage and uh, much of removal of toxicity and then allowing a good clarity, mental clarity and decision making uh, when the gallbladder functions well. It regulates humidity, allows lymphatic drainage and lubricates the tendons and opens the fascial spaces and orifices. So the focus is to guide and open everything to lead thought to clarity. And finally, we come to the sixth meridian, Yang Ming, which comprises of large intestine and the stomach and the interior of the exterior, the front of the body. The Yang Ming is full of chi and blood. You know why? Morning, when you wake up in the morning, the blood is pure. It doesn't contain any nutrients or you had not taken your breakfast, right? And the defecation has been done. You had cleared your intestines also between five and seven. And between seven and nine, you had prepared your breakfast and you had just had the breakfast and that had been taken into your stomach only. It had not been absorbed in the blood so far. So until nine o'clock, the blood is rich. There is more, there is more blood and there is more chi. So chi is 100%, blood is also 100%, almost, not absolute. So almost 100%, 100%, full. So Yang Ming is full of chi and blood. And is the warm core within Yang and the relatively solid place from which Yang begins to grow outward 
to its eventual dispersal to the external environment at a time. So this is the most warm core which can absorb the vitamin D. So at that time you can absorb vitamin D, you can absorb proper alertness to the brain reaches because the large intestine meridian is not an intestine meridian, it is a brain meridian. It carries alertness to the brain. It gives an awakening, it gives, it makes you conscious of purposeful behavior. That's why we use it for de-addiction, cigarette de-addiction, alcohol de-addiction, for tonification, immune enhancing and all. It regulates dryness. If there is abundant qi and blood in a body produced by a Yang Ming, then dryness cannot take hold. As Yang Ming holds and generates a lot of heat, there is always the potential for it to slip into dryness and indeficiency. <coughs> so the focus is to awaken to purposeful behavior and alert every space within the body. Now, Jing Lu. So what about the Lu? The Lu are the collaterals that are transverse branches bifurcating from the Jing, the meridians. They are not vertical, they are horizontal. The, the collaterals are horizontal. There are 15 collaterals in all, each of the 12 regular channels. So why 12? 6 into 2, right? One arm, one foot. So there are 12. So there are, there are so many branches, 12 into 1, that is 12, plus Ren and Dew, 13 and 14, and then the great collateral of the spleen, 15. So there are 15 collaterals. Tell me now, how many are there actually? 15 minus 2 into 2, right? 15 minus 2 into 2. So you have 12 regular channels, collaterals, then Ren and Dew. You have to subtract Ren and Dew because they are unilateral. There is one Ren and one Dew only, but there are two large intestine, two lung meridians, two spleen meridians. Everything is bilateral and so 12 into 2, 24 plus 2, 26 plus 2 again. So 28. So there are totally physically 28 collaterals, but you call them 15 collaterals. That's a general talk. So the limb collaterals of the in channels run towards the yang channels. They connect to the yang in the limbs, while the collaterals of the yang channels run to their related yin. So they connect the yin and yang in the arms and the legs. Whereas in the trunk, the trunk collateral of the rain channel spreads over the abdomen. The collateral of the dew channel disperses through the head and branches off to join the Tai Yang channel of the foot. So somewhere the collaterals of the trunk are different, the collaterals of the extremities are different. And the great collateral of the spleen is distributed over the chest and hypochondriac regions. The luo strengthen the function of the jing, the essence, sorry, the jing, the vertical meridians, and closely connect to the exterior interior related channels. They assist the transportation and distribution of qi and blood in order to moisten and nourish the whole body. While qi of the jing descends abruptly like dropping stones, like st stones dropping from, from heaven or from or the raindrops dropping abruptly very quickly from the heaven or crawls upward swiftly on the yin meridians that is the yang meridians the jing drops abruptly and the yin jing the yin meridian the liver the spleen and the kidney meridians they crawl upward very swiftly within the duo the chi actually disperses gently like a feather it is like floating so you drop a stone from a from a 10 story building it will fall very fast you shoot a gun you shoot something like uh, something you shoot something from the from the bottom with a gun so it will it will ascend very slowly it will crawl very slowly and however it will be very fast but if you drop a feather from a 10 story building what will happen that feather will move very slowly, very gently. You can look at the mouse cursor now. So very slowly, gently, it will be moving across all the micro capillaries and cells of our body. So that is the difference between the Jing and the Luo. 
now come to Wuxing. Wuxing, that is five element theory. Five, Wu is five. Xing is not element, it is actually movements. The five movements is more about five patterns or sets of elements that interplay for the life activities, their influence on the psyche, and their influence on the purpose of a person's journeys and more. Actually, Wu Xing originally dots the five celestial planets, the Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, that move to create five dimensions of terrestrial life. The five elements, five phases, five landscapes, and such five components in the macrocosm and the microcosm, which is the body. Now, listen to this. Uh... Every person born in this universe is having a biological adaptation to the surroundings, to the latitude and longitude as well as the altitude, which is the level from the sea, level from the bottom. So it talks about the three dimensions, where you are placed, north and south pole, and at which longitude you are placed, whether east or west, and at what height from the bottom surface of the earth you are placed, that is the altitude. Therefore, there is a landscape created, the highest landscape being the Hinge plane, which we consider to be on our fist, on the fist of all of us, on top of the fist, like a mountain. It looks like a hill, right? It looks like a peak. And from the young spring, flows down towards the wrist, the area called the shoe stream, which is full of valleys and forests. And after the shoe stream, there is a long shaft of the bone, the arm bone, the radius ulna, and on the foot you have fibula and tibia. And along the shaft of the long bones, you have the river, the Jing River which is at lower altitudes because water has to flow down from the top spring through the forest, through the jungles as a stream, through the jungles and villages and then creating cities and civilization by flowing as a river. So there have been so many rivers in the whole world in the whole planet that we are living in and we know the history of the past between the shore and the other shore between uh, the Vicks and Tories of England and between uh, brothers and uh, everything. And even now we have the Sindh, Sindh River in the Punjab where Pakistan is divided from India. So you know, you understand that the rivers actually start dividing uh, the civilizations are creating uh, uh, chaos and more uh, chances of transformation, alteration, and everything. And finally, when the sea merges down into the ocean, there are beaches, waterlogs, and there you have the swamps. It is very damp, and these are known as the he sea points on the elbow joints and the knee joints, and they are all more sweaty, and these are the places where you have points which have multiple capacity, and those points on the EC had been in the embryological stage, developing the points on both the sides by moving, by pushing, and pushing the embryo further to develop into the muscles and to develop into the shoulder. Therefore, you can say that a point on the elbow created the shoulder when it was at the embryonic state. And the same point also created the wrist and the fingers. So you should understand that there is 
a developmental biology associated in acupuncture science all together and the understanding of the five landscapes is so important and these five landscapes have been mentioned in tamil literature as kurinji mullai maragam palai and neidal so this palai or the jing well is at the fingertips the fingertips as well as the tips of the toes also so they represent a space where there is dryness where there is where you can't find the yin or the yang and you cannot differentiate and there is a change in polarity and they are somewhere the extremes and they are so powerful in awakening therefore we use the jing well points for emergency for awakening for blood letting to clear the meridian to make the flow of the chi better so these are the five landscapes the jing well the yin spring the shu stream jing river and then the he sea and i will uh, give you elaborately the idea of this five landscapes and the 60 command points in a brief booklet so the five elements the wood fire earth metal and water are fundamental elements between which interactions occur and the five frequencies and five spirits are much responsible in harmonizing the quality of the zhang organs so the taoistic or chinese music which was similar to indian music is more influential in the healing process because they can influence the spirit by influencing the spirit you can move the zhang organ the zhang organ can be treated when you treat the spirit within the zhang organ now the five zhang organ and the five frequencies so the chinese music consists of only five notes which are called gong shang jiu ji yu roughly matching with the tones of do re mi sol la and in indian music it is sa ri ga pa da and nothing else only five notes da pa ga ri sa sa da pa ga ri sa sa ri sa da nirarum kadaludutta nilamadandai kedilolugum Ah, looks like Chinese music, right? So for music, you don't have to say whether it is Chinese music or anything. But the whole world can admire. The whole world is actually influenced by the frequency which is in hertz. So the frequency starts at two sixty one point six three. for for a normal male voice and then when you say sa sa ri ga pa da again the higher octave sa sa da pa ga ri sa that gives a raga called mohana and then when you do scale shifting you get then four more ragas and these ragas have been actually included Uh, to create a mood when you look at each and every spirit, each and every zhang organ and the spirit in them. So this ancient music gives a simple, slow, and natural flow instead of the strong rhythm on grand symphony, which is more common in Western music. Therefore, five pentatonic. That is five. Then there are five notes only in a raga. It's called a pentatonic. If there are six, it is called a hexatonic. if there are seven notes you call it a heptatonic seven so pentatonic they evolve with the bass drone and the scale shift and this has been given as a chart as a table for you to just understand and let us talk about the five shen the five shen or the five spirits of zhang the heart kidney spleen liver and lungs these spirits have a connection with the zhang organ its associated element and the energy of a planet and the direction so the five shen when in harmony when in balance vibrate with the resonant beauty the treatment involved in tcm 
should also help the five shen to return to unity so tcm is an approach where you integrate lots of things not only just the not only the needling not only the needling it's also about music it's also about massage it's also about diet it's also about exercise it's about tai chi qigong the breathing techniques there are so many things in in taoism there are so many things in tcm Shen is the emperor of the heart, the spirit of the heart, and rules all the other spirits. The element is fire. The direction is south, and the planet is Mars. The overall quality of our awareness, which can be perceived through clear, sparkling, responsive eyes, indicating that healthy Shen is vibrant, fluid, and intelligent. That's why when you look at somebody, you can find out from their eyes. You can just look into their eyes and say that. they are healthy or they are sick so you can find a sick person just by looking into the eyes i even tried doing complete diagnosis by looking into somebody's eyes was successful only once <laughs> you cannot try it every time right? so it was it was easy it was good it was good when when i looked into his eyes i just asked him whether he had an accident on account of which he had become too lean and thin and he said yes i had an injury falling from a bike and uh, that was on my lumbar back see automatically when the mingmen is injured when there is an injury on the lumbar back the mingmen gets injured the daimai gets injured the daimai is about space the size of a person so when the size of a person shrinks see i didn't go deeply into the theory but on looking into his eyes the intuition will automatically connect the heart to the heart the heart and heart can get connected through by by looking by gazing into a person's eyes you can connect your heart into the other person's heart and you can take you can you can grab whatever is inside so we can actually practice that but that was actually known as nokuvarmam in the past Uh, one of the last traditions one of the traditions that we had actually given away to other people So this is the tune, the frequency pertaining to kidney, the da frequency. But this raga is different. This raga is mohana. However, so the kidneys will to act, the spirit of the kidney to administer many things because the kidneys are so much responsible in in our uh, body, mind, spirit, physiology everywhere. They are supposed to cool and calm down the heart. and if you want to actually make somebody to sleep you have to treat the kidney point of the heart h3 the water point of the heart which will cool down and uh, completely relax them completely uh, give a dopamine energy calm down calm down the spirit so you have to understand which are all the spirit points so always when you touch fire or water and you appropriately use certain points you will be automatically inclined to calm down the spirits so the element is water you know the direction is north the planet is mercury g is in charge of the intention effort and perseverance needed to accomplish things towards success in spiritual practice <laughs>
CE, the intellect of the spleen. E is the spirit of the spleen with intentions. Tamil is a very good thing. So they say the person is so stubborn. So yet the base, the base chakra has to be stubborn and as broad as possible. It should be broader than the other chakras. And it is attached to clan, everything, to clan, caste, your tradition and everything. So certain things we will never let go. We, we are always bound to something. We are grounded somewhere. And that is the base note saw. That's the drone from where you start every music. So the element is earth. The direction is center because it is a central act. It is a, this element is actually central to all the other elements and taking care of everything. So the planet is Saturn. The E includes our conceptual mind to form intentions. <laughs> So this is the frequency re which produces by scale shift a raga called Megamallar, Megamallar or Madhyamavati, which is very much soothing, very much calming to the breath. The breathing process will get regulated so intensely. So the spirit of the lungs is called Po, the corporeal soul. And when it is extreme, the people are arrogant. They are all self-centered and they have, a, they demand self-respect. The element is metal because metal usually will demand self-respect. Now, what is demand for gold, you know? With uh, lots of gold chains, a woman cannot walk on the streets before because many people had become poor and they would love to snatch those chains and sell them. So you have to be very careful. You have to look at the poverty around. Not at your vanity, not at uh, your own pride of having so much of jewelry, jewelry around you. Better give them away. That should be the best time. This is the best time to give away, right? Okay, the direction is west. The planet is Venus. The aspect of consciousness that dissolves with the elements of the body at the time of death is corporeal soul, Po. Hun, the spirit of the liver and the minister to the emperor heart. The element is wood. The direction is east. The planet is Jupiter. Hun is the aspect of consciousness that continues to exist subtly even after the death of body. As spiritual practice deepens, more of the Po supports Hun and one can feel heaven on earth manifesting because the arrogance will be gone. They will become very silent, they will become meditative and they will become compassionate and much peaceful. They will, they will uh, actually, all the noise, when all the noise disappears, there, there will be peace of mind. Every person can become peaceful. So that's the only way. You cannot go for peace of mind. You cannot buy peace of mind by paying anything. Only by shutting down, you can bring peace, you can become peaceful. So the five evolutive phases are actually in our five element theory. The five element theory is about five phases, fire to earth, earth to metal or earth to water or water to fire or water to earth or connectivity. They talk about the connections between the elements and not the elements in isolation. So the vital chi manifests as five evolutive phases, fire, earth, air, water, and wood. Molding, cutting, blending, shaping, 
right dissolving water is dissolving wood is growing so the five element theory of acupuncture that explains the circulation stabilization and distribution of these five phases of energy so the five element theory encompasses two dynamic relationships generation and control that explain how the major organ systems are interconnected so it is always about interconnection of one organ and the other one element and the other and what they do and what is happening there is a close relationship between each of the five elements that includes mutual promoting in a natural way and restraining one another in a rational way in a logical or rational way with a reason there is a reasoning there is a rational there is a restraining and rhythmic sequential automatically in nature there will be rhythm like the heart getting active between 11 and 1 when there is the, the sun is on the uh, zenith and the kidneys getting activity when the sun sets so there is a sequential relationship there is a rational relationship there is a natural relationship in place of sheng ko and organ clock theory so you have three relationships under both physical condition and pathological conditions so we will talk about the parent and child relationship which you call sheng cycle which is natural water creates wood wood creates fire fire creates earth earth creates metal and metal creates water and so the cycle continues to bring up and lead a child the parent should grow and travel together they uh, have to actually get nourished themselves they have to be in a cycle that be a circle actually circuit the parent should grow and travel together they watch one another mutually the same way zhang and fu also harmonize each other through the collateral feedback so here there are the zhang organs the spleen which also have an intercommunication with the fu organ stomach so here there is lung which is also interconnected to the large intestine the kidney which is also interconnected to the bladder so they have to be in the loop so they have to harmonize one another through a collateral feedback so that is the need for the collaterals so the cycle of chi shown in the figure is the normal cycle from fire to earth earth to air air to water water to wood and wood to fire known as the productive or constructive that is the creation cycle the sheng cycle each element generates chi within the zhang and gives the following zhang it gives to the zhang because the heart even though it circulates blood if there is a coronary artery blockage if the blood needed by the heart muscles is stagnant there is a burning sensation there is a radiation of pain bilaterally and that is known as a heart attack mild heart attack and the storage within itself is based on the fu organs feedback the fu organ will provide a feedback how much to keep for itself and how much to distribute so the quantity and quality of generation within the zhang organ is decided by the feedback mechanism of the fu organ through the luo point so that is why the luo points are very powerful in actually balancing most of this five element physiology in any condition so these parents that, that is the couple's child relationship is a natural relationship the parent child relationship is a natural relationship now come to the logical logical relationship or the rational relationship in the co cycle each element also restrains or controls another in the co cycle the proper amount of control keeps all the elements in proportion with control with discipline one organ system acts as a feedback loop for its opposite pair as well as its partner organ to keep them functioning smoothly i mean when kidneys are actually doing something to quench the heat of the heart using p3 or h3 and you are cooling down in a, in a febrile condition and when there is loss of blood in a person you use this inhibition the inhibition route 
automatically there will be an impact on the bladder also there will be an impact on the small intestine also so the partner organ to keep them functioning smoothly neither excessively nor deficiently neither too strongly nor too weakly these element pairs are known as husband and wife and form a rational relationship now you come to the physiology of what is happening when the five elements interact when wood acts on earth it is penetration so wood penetrates earth see this wood penetrates earth let me take the annotator now how it will be useful so wood penetrates earth how can wood penetrate earth if it is very solid and dry and a cracked surface so the wood cannot penetrate when you sow a seed when you plant a seed in the earth the earth should not be dry it has to be moist right it has to be very damp so you need actually damp soil so without damp soil you will not be able to plant a seed and make it to sprout so therefore the only after the earth absorbs water only after the earth absorbs water you will be able to penetrate the earth so after the earth absorbs water the wood penetrates the earth okay how can wood absorb water when the water is not available so the water will be available the bio availability of water within the living system within the physiological system will be ensured only after water had inhibited fire so there should not be a febrile condition if the person is in fever if the person is very hot very dry so there won't be sufficient water inside of him so one day after the water had extinguished the water had finished its thermoregulatory action of inhibition inhibition of the excessive heat and the excessive stress in a body there will be water bio availability of water and that bio avail biologically available water will be absorbed and there will be enough dampness and the wood will be able to penetrate and that's why most of the times in many many sick states we don't have an appetite we are not hungry because we cannot further take any food inside so there won't be further penetration there won't be proper blood circulation so our stomach will not actually secrete the juices there won't be hunger so there will be a fever so when there is fever a person is hungry you understand that because the, the water is not there is no bio availability of water it's not available so water inhibits fire so when will it inhibit fire how can it inhibit fire only after fire activates metal so fire has a supreme purpose of activating activating the metal it has to do the immunological process of activating or opening the alternate complement pathway it has the function of activating the cytokines to block any obstructive pathology within the body so unless the fire could clear so that is why giving a paracetamol to control a fever is always unhealthy you have to allow the fire you have to allow the heat to act on the cytokines and the release of the enzymes the catabolic enzymes to actually remove the pathogen remove the obstructive pathology and this the metal can be actually activated or molten by fire only after sufficient cutting down sufficient cutting down or the folding of the proteins had happened the folding of the proteins which will call structuring had actually properly occurred so this is called structuring proper neurotransmission and this is called penetration flow of blood in the micro capillaries for proper absorption of nutrition and proper uh, flow of blood even into the uh, smallest cells and for the cell wall permeation of glucose sodium potassium etc and this is called absorption and reabsorption absorption of 
the nutrients in the food and the reabsorption of bicarbonate and other substances from the urine in the u-loop the u-tubes of the kidneys and this is called inhibition keeping the hypothalamus and the hypothalamic sweat response and the heat of the body at proper levels to protect the heart and the other other organs in the body and the brain and the nerve nervous system also intact the kidney has such a huge responsibility in the hpa axis it is very important and the action of fire whenever it has to condition something and then to make the alternate complement loop of immunological pathway to get active and to allow the cytokines to actually do the catabolic action of destroying destroying certain unwanted pathogens in the body so the co cycle is much more important in physiology because you can see that there is penetration absorption inhibition activation and structuring all physiology is coming together in a co cycle so in another module actually i had presented the five physiologies uh, during a webinar for an international uh, genome research project and i think uh, we have much more slides which are hidden like exopathogens endopathogens then the four c's a four seasons four c's and then the needling during seasons and all that and uh, i wish to meet you all in future uh, for much more sessions because it will be too boring if uh, i push more of theory just now i just wanted to name it tcm on the go and then give you certain ideas which are not present in normal text or usually things are not taught like this music or like the spirits or uh, like the five physiologies so the five landscapes five physiologies five patterns of suffering or actually my creamy area i love them i love to research more on them and meet you all uh, with the uh, with still better presentations and i am very sorry that in the video clips there was a lot of noise and i am not responsible it was the wind it was the wind blowing around uh, seattle and uh, somewhere on santa marina beach so it was too noisy and even uh, i couldn't be uh, patiently listening to that so however i can i can remake everything i can just use uh, studio to actually um, make them all perfect and dr thomas over to you for your opinion and then for stopping the recording